Wow, it's been a while, a couple months, something like that, but I'm back with another wonky Risk of Rain 2 build. First things first though, you might be wondering why exactly I picked up that item. The Fuel Array is an orange item where if you drop to 50% HP, you die. Instantly explode, it's very tragic. I think you unlock Rex by bringing that to the fourth level, the red level, Abyssal Depths, is that what it's called? Something like that. But either way, uh, otherwise it is, it is not a great item. Unless you're playing Engineer, because then you can do a bit of a goofy strat, because if your turrets inherit your items, and they drop to 50% HP, they too can explode. It's very interesting. Uh, unfortunately, right off the bat here, I see that there's a couple Void Cradles, which will drop me to 50%. So I'm like, all right, well, I got to get rid of this thing if I want any items. Luckily, out of that Lunar Pod, I get an orange. So that's pretty nice. But what am I doing today? What build is this? This is Egocentrism, which is an item that pretty much defines the entire build and breaks a lot of the conventions of Risk Rain 2 because it's kind of the only item you need. So I don't really care what I'm getting out of these Void Cradles. It's not really ideal, I'm gonna be honest. I'm also healing off that Elite just so I don't instantly get hit one time and then die after picking this thing back up. Uh, but Egocentrism is a blue item. This is really the first time I'm ever doing a build with it, so I don't know if my strategy is really great. My whole technique here is just to amass as many items as possible because if you know anything about blue items, you know that they usually have an upside and a downside. Sometimes the downsides can kind of be counteracted, like if you have a spinal tonic, spinal tonic, and you have enough fuel cells or gestures of the drown, there really is no, kind of, really no downside. Uh, but this one does have one. And the whole identity of egocentrism, you can kind of get it from the name, is that it's an item that is very selfish. Once you pick it up, it's pretty powerful. There's gonna be three orbs that circle me. We're gonna get it pretty soon as long as I clear this first level, get as many items as possible, you know? Also, there I noticed that my turrets were getting pretty low HP. So you saw them explode a little bit through the wall. I mean, you didn't really see it. I don't think I really get to utilize this strategy much. This is also the first time I'm ever using Fuel Array. I'm getting sidetracked. Anyway, what Egocentrism does is it spawns you with three little orbs that circle around you and auto-target your enemies. However, every 60 seconds, it's going to steal one of your items to spawn one more orb, and it does not care what item it is. It could steal a, a mocha, okay? It could steal a goat hoof. It could also steal a shattering justice. It could steal a 57 leaf clover. It does not discriminate. It is just, uh, you know, taken for itself, a bit egocentric. Now you're gonna notice throughout this run that I'm doing this little wiggle thing with my reticle. That's because if you just hold down your mouse when using that, that mouse five skill that you see at the bottom right, what is it, utility skill with engineer, it takes a bit longer if you do that wiggle, 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 it goes a bit faster. That's about the extent of tech that I know from engineer. And you're gonna see also right away that I'm using a mod where if I kill the boss, I'm, I'm just going, I, I, I'm leaving, teleporter's charged. I will say it does make the game considerably easier, which is something that I probably should consider. Also, I just realized it's like a perfect five minutes at the top right, right? Or is it point eighty-eight? I can't tell. I don't think you can get to 88. Don't pay attention to this. It's just really unlucky. I'm trying to find the one item. And there it is. Egocentrism. Gain multiple orbiting bombs. I don't know what I'm doing here. All right, let's just move on. I I'm not going to use those cauldrons because I'm losing items. This is insane. I was not looking at my game. I was reading. If I fall off the map there, I just die because I have, I have fuel array. So that was probably the riskiest thing I've done today. But now the whole run is going to start to get a bit crazy. I'm also using a mod to, to make that a lot faster. If you can't tell, I'm not the most patient person. But here I'm just demonstrating a little bit about what egocentrism does. So these things auto aim at targets these little circling orbs, and then they respawn every three seconds or so, I, I believe. I believe it's 60 seconds and three. I, I could actually be wrong there. I should, probably should have double checked, but do I sound like someone who's very prepared very often? Not really. I picked up those tougher times because I don't want to drop down to 50% HP and then just lose the run instantly. That'd be tragic. But as you can see, my turrets are also inheriting egocentrism. So it begins with only a handful of orbs, but as the run gets longer, as you pick up more and more items, it's gonna start to take over. And you really wanna get more items per minute than one, because otherwise you're gonna run out of things to feed off of. And it's a very, very, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say it's the most fascinating build out there. I think the novelty of it for me is why it was very interesting. But I feel like once you have an egocentrism build once, you kind of get the gist of it, which is 
amass as many items as you can. Don't look at that. As ma amass as many items as you can. Hopefully they're strong and hopefully they're good and hopefully you can stack ones that allow you to deal a bunch of damage because the, the damage of these things can kind of drop off towards the late game and we might end up seeing that later on. I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember. This is a few days old. I was not able to do a commentary, but that's why I'm doing this in post. With a little bit of quicker speed, hopefully. But either way, this is uh, an interesting item to say the least because it completely changes how you play the game. It, it kind of flips the game on its head because the whole thing is about gathering all these synergies and items that work together and, and combos and, and all that. And then here is just like, oh, here's one item that does, that, that does everything for you. And I guess it doesn't give you speed. That's the biggest thing. I, I think I'm gonna be looking for speed as much as I can here. I also didn't really mention why I have the, the no boss, no wait is the mod where it instantly clears it. I don't want to sit in the circle. That's that's pretty much the extent of it. I could have probably picked up glasses there. I don't even know if, if that was there. I'm really not paying too much attention to what items I'm getting right now because it doesn't matter all too much when you have ego centers. I'm, I'm looking away. Those are the, the, those are the turrets. The, the, it just exploded. It didn't even, even have time. My, my whole strategy there, my whole plan, was I'm gonna run away. The turrets are gonna deal some damage. I forgot that that was there. Actually, I feel alright. It doesn't even matter. I'm gonna run away so that the clay dune shredder sucks in all that HP, and then the turrets will explode with the fuel array, and it'll be a great big explosion. Happy, happy time. And then I don't get killed by my own turrets explosion. Uh, but they just killed it so fast because this item is very powerful at least early game It does a ton of damage it auto aims for you here I'm just gonna walk by and that guy's dead uh, those wisps. What are those called? I don't know pests that, that must be what it is flying pest Yeah, you don't really have to worry about it as long as you jump up high enough They're going to be taken out by these orbs that regenerate pretty quickly You're gonna notice that the whole strategy kind of revolves around kiting your opponents in time for those recharges to come back here, what am I gonna get? All right, I gotta get rid of this fuel array, especially with the void seed here. I don't want to take any collapse damage. That's the most dangerous thing for me, so uh, I'm, I'm getting rid of that. I didn't really get to utilize the strategy much. There was one big exp That's the turret. Okay, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, so that's what I was worried about that whole time. I'm very glad I got rid of the fuel array for that moment right there, but okay yeah so i forgot that i spawned another turret i thought that that one was about to kill me because i saw it was like it was low hp anyway I'm, I'm getting another newt seed newt altar here so i can calm down a little bit yeah that's uh unfortunately did not get to use the strategy much but there's always time for another run and there egocentrism goes just taking another one of my items the two that i got from the first stage already are gone now i don't believe that it takes it in order i'm pretty sure it's random actually i'm 99 percent sure it's random and if i'm wrong about that that is very unfortunate because i i was very overly confident but either way uh, my whole goal really is to just amass as much power as i can in the form of quantity not necessarily quality just quantity and that's also something that i think can come in handy with the most recent uh, patch although i guess this is a new item as well the survivors of the void patch the update the dlc because items like the uh, the executive card where you can get all three of those out of the terminal the, the shop is very helpful because then you have three extra items that egocentrism can take from now something you could also do as a bit of strategy is just wait around you know if you got a bunch of items you want a bit more power you could wait around Unfortunately, that also means the enemies get stronger, so I'm not going to do that. I don't know if that's a good strategy. Look at me. I'm a terrible player. Look what I'm about to do. I forgot that those things would auto hit the, the guys, the, the little barrels. So don't listen to me, actually. I don't know why I said that. I'm luckily, luckily I got some healing. So now that I can, uh, now that I got that, I can actually use those void, void cradles. Oh my god, I can't say anything without having to, to wait forever. Because I probably wouldn't do that. Let's be real here. If I'm skipping bosses with a mod, there's no chance I'm waiting to optimize items. And you can see just how fast this Overlord is just getting obliterated. I, I mean, this is stage 3, 13 minutes in, and, and they're just dying. They're just getting eviscerated. And, and that's some of the power of egocentrism. I'm just going to spawn some more enemies here. Don't even look at them. Just keep walking forward. Get some more items. Speed is great. Uh, I was thinking, why was I holding off on that? There must be some 3D printer. I don't know. I don't know why I looked at it like that. Uh, unfortunately, I can't get into the mind of Mencia of exactly where I was doing and what I was thinking in the past there. Just healing up a little bit, just in case. 
just in case of these, these little guys killing me. Why was I even worried? I have egocentrism. They're going to auto target. It doesn't even matter. Getting some Lungus there is great. I get the faster healing and I do it from running. Poly loot, great item. Is it going to help me that much realistically over the course of this run? Probably not. Maybe not. I got a rusted key there. Uh, I, yeah, not really thinking it through the item decisions too much. Now, I could probably optimize just so that there's, I don't know, proc chains from these egocentrism guys. I don't know if that's the right term. I'm going to be real with you. Someone's going to yell at me but some kind of damage multipliers. But I, at this point, it really doesn't matter all too much. I already have 10 stacks of it. I got one stack after the first level. I'm at 10. I have a, oh, this is, <laughs> that's why. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense why I waited for that soda. But yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter if I also have a mocha. Um, and then look at those guys, little circling. I think this is where something weird happens. I'm pretty sure there's a big old glitch. I forgot about that crate. Guys, look, I'm not a great player. I'm very impatient. Yeah, these are supposed to circle around me. I don't know why they're just hovering like that. It's all wonky. It's all weird. But the reason why I came here in specific in particular is because I wanted to show you that getting an additional stack of egocentrism, just picking it up like that, does not multiply the rate at which... Yeah, I finally noticed the orbs. The, the rate at which the orbs uh, multiply and capture your other items, steal your other items. It merely increases the stack count by one. So it's not like if you get five egocentrisms, you're gonna take all the items five times as quickly. It's merely that you're just getting one extra orb around you. Uh, so that's why I was doing that. It also means that I can go to Siren's Call and get a guaranteed red item. The thing is about guaranteed items, yeah. Okay, so delicate watches are insanely good, but the reason why I'm not printing it, printing it there is just in case I get too low HP, it means those items are gone. Less things for the egocentrism to suck up, okay? Again, it's all about quantity. That's at least what I'm thinking right now. Is that optimal? Eh, am I having fun? Eh, no, I am. I'm enjoying myself. Uh, I noticed that there's one right there. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to jump down and become the bomb. Didn't actually do as much damage as I thought it would. But uh, but they respawn so quickly that it's A-OK. -okay. You know, it's A-OK. -okay. I am having fun. Who am I kidding? I got to kill this ally worship. Al ally? alloy worship unit now just so i can get my red item if you don't know if you destroy some of those nests which these ego balls will automatically do these little floating orbs then you can spawn this additional boss who you can in some ways some positions some situations instantly ko i was kind of hoping if i jumped down maybe i'd be able to do it because i think if you hit it on the frame that it spawns or something I don't know. There's some wacky game code that is very interesting and allows you to do some interesting strategies, but I got the executive card, which this run is actually kind of crazy. It's actually kind of insane. The Alloy Worship Unit is already almost dead. I wasn't even paying attention to it. My turrets dealing a billion damage with their own little orbs, and the guy is just stuck on the ground. I'm circling around. Every, uh, every three seconds or so, one of those guys is spawning, but... I think my plan here is I'm going to build up a, uh, a bigger... No, uh, never mind. I was going to say I'm going to build up a bigger nest egg and then attack from that. Doesn't matter. And then I get, like, the best item I could possibly get. Dio's best friend is an item where if you die, you respawn. Which, in most runs, not the best. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It's not bad. It's just... Would you, I feel like, would you rather have an item that makes you extreme powerful and I'm so cool and power and I like it a lot? Didn't count my money there, by the way. I forgot I kind of had this item. I melted this guy way too fast. Uh, we're, not, we're not gonna talk about that. I just picked up the executive card and didn't even use it, but... The general idea is that I feel like there's a lot of red items that are so strong that I'll just make it very difficult to die, that getting one that makes you respawn when you die, not the best. With the exception being Engineer, because if your sentries inherit it, that means every time your sentries die, they're going to respawn with invulnerability, which is very cool. So it's a super cool item. Definitely uh, one of my favorites to see on the engineer. Very happy I got that. And spawning those turrets right there. You can just see the billion orbs. And we're already on stage five here. Uh, this is definitely faster than I think I would normally play. I just wanted to get this not necessarily over with, but I had a... <laughs> yeah. I forgot about this. Uh, <laughs> we don't have to talk about that. I know I picked up a feather, but I kind of double jumped into that one. And then I got scared. And I was hoping that that little airstream would catch me. But I guess I had too much momentum, so now I'm just running away. It was like CJ phone home. Either way, uh, I kind of got the gist of what I was doing here already. And what I could do is I could... <laughs> I could lose my Dios instantly. Very unfortunate. Uh, what I could do is I could try looping and amass more items faster than Ego takes them. 
That way I can, uh, oh, also I'm looking for any kind of way to skip the pillars because if I'm skipping bosses, you better bet I'm trying to skip the pillars in the final level. Uh, crowd plunder is not going to do that for me, but yeah, uh, I forgot what I was saying anyway. The TLDR is what I could do is loop and I could get even more items and that way the ego becomes part of a larger build rather than kind of the build itself. Well, uh, cause I'm getting more items than the ego is taking them at a faster rate. That way I can kind of customize a build for myself. And if it only takes one item, if I have, let's say 10 lens makers glasses and I get one extra because that way I can, uh, I can ensure that even if ego takes it, I still have hundred percent crit. Uh, let's say I have the, the har harvester scythe and the predatory instincts, I believe uh, I can get extra of stuff and ensure that I have a great build on top of egocentrism. I could do that. Or I could also just not do that, and so I chose not to. <laughs> I just, I just wanted, I just wanted to go quick. Uh, I'm standing outside the grandparents' range here because I'm a bit spooked, and I kind of want to see what happens uh, if it attacks other things. But I don't think it does. I think that's only the void one, and I was misinterpreting the the attack range there. I lost my little uh, probes there. I forgot what that item is called. Don't really care about that. I I'm fine with that because I'm still doing a bazillion damage. Gup's spawning is fantastic because I, I can kind of just walk into them. If I use some of the orbs to kill them, that's great. My orbs will respawn and kill the smaller guys, it's great. The, the radius of the attack is pretty large. All in all, this build is kind of kind of powerful. I'm getting a bit more healing there just in case because that, that, <laughs> that, that Sky Gimp that I almost got at the beginning, I mean, I got another one. I guess I didn't need, really need to do that, but it was unfortunate. And I get really lucky again. Not only did I get <laughs> one of the best attacking equipments in the game, but I got something to skip to the final boss. The eccentric vase. I don't have to worry whatsoever about doing pillars now. And I'm on cloud nine. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling fantastic. Even more move speed. The only thing I'd say that's kind of lacking a little bit is damage. Which is kind of crazy to say, given how fast I melted that last boss. But all in all, my damage output could certainly be better. I really don't have that many items in general that multiply the power of this egocentrism. Which I think just goes to show how powerful it is on its own. Again, I'm just becoming the bomb. It's not even like, like, I just walk into them. I'm not even attacking really, I I'm literally just circling around, waiting for one to respawn, then waiting for a bunch to respawn so I can do a bigger attack, and then walking into their range. It is pretty fun, I will admit, it, it, it is pretty fun to just become the, the unstoppable object and, and jiggle around a little bit, look, look at those little orbs jiggling around. But this damage is, is you know, it, it's a little lackluster, those bosses, they, they took a bit more of a beating. Uh, luckily, there's an ATG right there that can help with the damage. My plan right here, and this is probably the biggest mistake I made in this entire run, is I'm like, alright, I'm just gonna pick up this executive card, and then I'm going to use the vase and go all the way back, and I'm just gonna get those three items that I saw, and everything's gonna be okay. What I didn't realize is that if your equipment is on cooldown, the executive card doesn't work. And so... You know, because the whole time when you use the card, it has like an instant cooldown, so I didn't think about that, I didn't realize. Missed out on two items, that's okay. Not the biggest deal in the world. Losing a gas is totally fine if I'm trying to kill Mithrix, since that guy is one target, and I just gotta kill one guy. And now is commencement. The final level, these items, 22 of them now, circling around me. Surely it's gonna be more by the end of the run. And I could go to the cauldrons and hope to get a good red item or something, but I don't think that's worth it, trading in more and more ammo for the ego when I could in fact just go to the final boss right away with this vase. Uh, that guy's scaring me a little bit. I, I see a chimera, is that what you call it? Lunar chimera? In the sky. I always thought that was chimera. So I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a smart guy. Uh, and I don't like watching myself take damage. It stresses me out. It's like I'm in the moment here. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool, like, uh, starry array there. Kind of missed the mark here. Don't look at this. <laughs> yeah, even I knew in the past. All right, Mithrix time, big boy boss fight. This is going to be a bit of a slog. Now getting, uh, or not getting, I should say, a bunch of damage items, and then getting the damage items that I did have kind of siphoned away has hurt a little bit, I will say. Now, for all intents and purposes, Mithrix is still eating a bunch of damage here but it's not necessarily the most. And that makes me a bit scared because as I've reiterated a few times here, I'm not the greatest uh, of players out there. 
And so getting not hit by Mythrix, especially with my level of patience, not necessarily something that I am adept at, you could say. And so this is a very stressful boss fight. Luckily, these turrets are just doing so much damage for me. Look at all their little orbs, and they suck. Uh, that's unfortunate. Didn't, didn't, didn't time that very well. Either way, Mythrix is almost dead. I'm just going to walk away. I'm not even going to look at him, because I have a feeling if I just put a, push a turret down there, the orbs that spawn while he chases me is going to kill it. Luckily, I was correct. Got to get rid of these guys. Also, did not mention why I've been gone for however long, a couple months. Uh, a few things. Number one is, this is definitely a side project, a bit of a second channel that was made primarily for uh, for stream VODs, but I decided, you know what, I could upload some other games here, that's also fine. Didn't really end up streaming that much recently. Uh, I've been kind of busy, kind of stressed out, and that also has compounded into this channel itself. I've just been so, so busy that I have no time to dedicate to this one given that I also have a main channel to maintain, which... <laughs> oh yeah, I discovered that you can go back and forth in here in the middle of the boss fight, and, and you wonder why I say that I'm not the best player. <laughs> I need to do some reflecting. Uh, but yeah, I barely have enough ch time for the main channel, so losing the Hopu Feather there is really tragic, actually. That's like most of my good movement uh, that I can utilize to escape situations, hop over his head, deal a bunch of damage with the orbs. So... Uh, even though these are generally one-off recordings, this is a bit of an exception. This is the first ever post-commentary I've ever done for Risk of Rain 2. I just haven't had the time, and so I haven't done it. But luckily, I found a way to streamline a little bit to make things a bit better. Uh, a lot of the audio processing I was doing for these bigger recordings was just taking forever. I found a way to automatically do it in the recording software itself, so I don't even have to worry about that at all. I just had to add a bunch of delay to my microphone in order to make up the difference for all that processing in real time. Uh, eee! Okay, I'm out. God, I'm, I'm telling you, watching myself play is not a good idea. I'm, just, I'm getting stressed all over again. There I took fall damage on purpose so I could get the boost in speed from the Old War stealth kit, I think. That's not true at all. Either way, Mithrix is almost dead in his third phase. Hopping over that one, I actually don't really know how far that goes up. Man, I should play this game more. I'm, I'm gonna be real, just watching me play makes me upset, and it makes me want to get better and play more. Uh, here I'm just trying to peek and see if I can get a bit of an ego snipe, which is very, I guess, fitting for the name of the item. As this boss fight has gone on, I, what if I, I've gotten like six additional spawns of orbs? Something like that. This has been, uh, like I said, a bit of a slog because I really haven't gotten that much damage. I think the ATG, though, has probably been helping me out, so I'm glad that stuck around. What I am worried about is this final phase, because I am playing a risky game, because Mithrix is going to take all of my items, and that includes all 28 stacks of egocentrism. So I'm like, I'm out of there, because as you can see, he spawned with a bunch of orbs. Actually, I don't know if you can see it. I can barely see it, although I guess I'm watching this on a tiny little window. Yeah, he spawns with all those orbs. So if I even get close instantly dead just instantly dead luckily it was the first item because it stole all of my other first items and that means i got all of them back instantly so all i gotta do is walk into his range wait for them to spawn and that's that mythrix is gone the game is won good night